everyone. We're here today to talk about the concept of limits. There are three ways we could choose to discuss the concept of a limit. The way we're going to focus on today is graphically looking at a picture of a function. We could also discuss a limit numerically at looking at how a value changes, or we could discuss a limit analytically, analyzing the function using algebra or trigonometry. But today we're going to focus on a graphical representation of a limit. First, some notation. If I write L I M, that means limit, and it's actually an operator. It works like a function. It is applied to something. So just writing LIM is nonsense. It needs to be applied to something. And here, since the function we're looking at is our f of x function, we're applying our limit to the function f of x. The other piece of the notation that you mean, that you, that you need, is you need to see what is x is getting close to. So here c is a constant number. So this is read the limit as x approaches c of f of x. So for instance, I may want to find the limit as x approaches negative 1 of the function f of x. So I have the function graphed in blue, and here's my x value of negative 1. Our first attempt to understand the limit might be to ask ourselves, okay, what does the function look like at negative 1? But if you'll notice, there's actually a hole in the graph at negative 1. So f of negative 1 does not exist. The function is undefined there. That, however, does not impact whether the limit exists. Because the limit says, as x gets close to negative 1, what is the y value or the f of x value getting close to? So if I look at my graph, I can see that there are two ways for me to get close to x equal negative 1 on the graph, on the blue graph. I can come in from the right, or I can come towards x from the left. So I will denote the limit as x approaches negative 1 from the right with a little plus sign. And now I can talk about this. The limit as x approaches negative 1 from the right of the function, well, as x is approaching negative 1, the y value is approaching 3. So this is a 3. Also, the limit as x approaches negative 1 from the left of the function f. Let's find that. So instead of looking from the right as x is getting close to this negative 1 value, I'm going to look from the left. As x approaches negative 1 from the left, the y value is also approaching 3. And since the limit as x approaches 1 from the right is 3, and the limit as x approaches negative 1 from the left is 3, I can conclude the limit as x approaches negative 1 from either direction is 3. Let's do another example. So for our second example, let's look at the limit as x approaches negative 2 of the function. At negative 2, you will notice there's not a hole in the graph anymore. There's actually this gap in the graph where the function has jumped from one type of behavior into another type of behavior. So I want to ask myself, does this limit exist? Does the limit of the function exist at negative 2? In order to analyze that, I need to look at approaching negative 2 from both directions. So if I approach negative 2 from the right, you'll see that the y value gets close to 3. However, if I approach negative 2 from the left, from this side, the y value gets close to 1. Since 3 and 1 are not equal, the limit as x approaches negative 2 of the function f does not exist. Let's do a third example. 
Okay, now let's look at the limit as x approaches 2 of the function f. Once again, we need to look at both sides. So let's evaluate the limit as x approaches 2 from the right of the function. So as x gets close to 2, you'll notice the function coming in from the right decreases without bound. That's what this little arrow means. It means it keeps going in that direction. So it decreases without bound. We have a notation for that. The notation minus infinity means that a limit does not exist, and it also provides a reason that the limit does not exist. And the reason here is that it decreases without bound. If I also look at the limit as x approaches 2 from the left of the function f, I can see that it decreases without bound as well. Therefore, the limit as x approaches 2 from either side is negative infinity, meaning that the function decreases without bound from both directions. Let's do another example. The limit as x approaches 0 0.5 of the function f of x. So at 0 0.5, you'll notice that there's a hole in the graph, like there was previously when we looked at the limit as x approaches negative 1. Except now, let's also make the definition that we have a function value. So if we look at the limit as x approaches 0 0.5, it approaches, as x approaches 0 0.5, the y value from the right approaches 3, and the y value from the left also approaches 3. So the limit as x approaches 0 0.5 of the function is 3, since the same y value is approached from either side. However, you will notice that f of 0 0.5 is 4. This is an important lesson, that our function value does not need to be equal to our limit value. We could also extend our definition of limits to talk about what happens as x grows very large. And that's what this notation means, the limit as x approaches infinity of the function. So as x continues in the positive direction, you'll notice that the function value keeps getting closer and closer and closer to the x-axis here. And the y value at the x-axis is zero. Similarly, the limit as x approaches negative infinity of the function is also zero. Because in the negative direction, the function increasingly gets closer to zero. To recap, you have seen two reasons why a function may fail to have a limit at a point. The first one that you saw was there was this gap in the graph so that the limit from the left of the function did not equal the limit from the right. And that is one reason why a limit may fail to exist, that their limits from the left and right are different numbers. Another reason why you saw that the limit could fail to exist is that the function value decreases without bound. It could also increase without bound. But in this example, it decreased without bound. We do have a notation for that, either infinity or minus infinity. But the notation doesn't mean that the function value exists. It says it does not exist, and it gives a reason why, that the function decreases or increases without bound. I hope you've enjoyed learning about limits. Remember, if you're not having fun, you're not doing it right. I say that in my class almost every day, so.